Hello, I'm uh, Reverend David Clark and welcome to Malvern Baptist Church Online. This morning is Remembrance Sunday and we particularly remember those who uh, died and fought in the two world wars. But we also remember all those who died and suffered in, in wars since that time too. And those who are suffering and dying at wars at present. Let's pray. Gracious God, we encourage you even in the sea of disorder and the darkness of the void, crying light and life become, and all creation was begun. We gather to praise. Redeeming God, we urge you even in the sins of destruction and the night time of sadness, crying enough, here is my son, love and hope for the future. We gather to praise. Inspiring God, we heard you even in the silence of sorrow and the anguish of pain, crying, if God be for us, who can be against us? We gather to praise. Let us sing, O God, our help in ages past. Psalm 37. Do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass they will soon wither, like green plants they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed and those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the brow to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own hearts will be broken. Now 
Let us sing, Lord, for the years. together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. we give you thanks for all those who fought and died for freedom in the world wars. We thank you for their sacrifice for us and for our way of life. We pray too, Lord, for the many who served in our armed forces subsequent to those world wars. We thank you too, Lord, for their sacrifice. And we pray for all who've suffered because of war, particularly in the last century. Pray for those who are suffering now, Lord, and we pray that they would know the comfort of your love. We 
And we pray for peace, Lord. We pray for peace in our world. We pray for the peacemakers. For those who work hard to bring nations together and peoples together. Grant them, Lord, your strength and your wisdom. Pray for those countries of the world at the moment where there is bloodshed and fighting. And we pray that you would stay the hands of evil men and strengthen those working for peace. Amen. Let us now remember in silence before God, those who have fallen in war. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun in the morning we will remember them. God of hosts, yours is the battle against evil. Yours is the victory over death. We come to you with memories of war and death, with scars of victory and defeat. By your Son Jesus, who bears the scars of his victory, one not for himself but for others, grant us this day healing for the past and resolution for the future. So may your world discover and know the peace which is your purpose for us all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us sing Beauty for Brokenness. <laughs> Compassion 
Our New Testament reading is from the first letter of John, chapter 2, starting to read at verse 28. And now, dear children, continue in him, so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Everyone who, break, who sins breaks the law, in fact, sin is lawlessness, but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's works. No one who is born of God will continue to sin, because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. And this is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. Lord, we think about a complete failure of love and of how the whole world is consumed with hatred. And Lord, help us today to put our hope and trust in you as we hear of your love for each one of us and your plan for our future. Many church historians point back to uh, the aftermath of the First World War as the beginning of the decline of the church in this country. The horrors of the trenches witnessed by the returning soldiers hit the confidence of many in a loving, sovereign God. But John here writes of how the Christian can be confident of their faith in Jesus Christ. And confidence is vital for effectiveness in many pursuits. Confidence is vital, for instance, for sports women and men. You can see how a confidence or a lack of confidence affects players. I watched the Wales losing to France last weekend in rugby, and Dan Bigger missed three kicks in a row, straightforward kicks. His confidence was affected by the fact that he missed a simple kick. And confidence is vital for school children. Many teachers are concerned to build up the esteem of their pupils. But John's concern here 
is how can the Christian be confident in their faith? You see, a lack of confidence saps a believer's joy. It hurts their effectiveness and their witness. I don't know if you remember the old uh, Colgate advert, yeah, the ring of confidence. Well, how can we have that ring of confidence about our Christian walk, even though the path may be tough? Well, firstly, we must continue to live in Jesus Christ. The only way to live a fruitful, confident Christian life is to be firmly rooted in Jesus. And that requires daily disciplines, prayer and Bible study and worship, obedience and fellowship and service. Regularly committing ourselves to growing closer to Jesus. I mustn't give up. Now, let's remember the example of Brahms. You know, it took him seven years to complete his lullaby. He kept falling asleep at the piano. But are you one of those people who only flosses their teeth when they go to visit the hygienist every six months? You can't fool them, you know. You, know, you need the daily discipline of flossing your teeth if you wish to maintain those... Uh, um, clean, gnashes. And John writes, And now, dear children, continue in him, so that when he appears we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. And there's a play on words here. In the Greek, God's children should have parousia, confidence, at his parousia, appearing. These Greek lingo jokes are killers, aren't they? But here's the motivation to press on in the Christian life. It comes from the motivation of knowing Jesus is coming soon and wanting to please him with our fruitful lives. Jesus is coming back and he's going to ask us to give an account for our lives. And that should be a motivation for us to continue in our walk with him. Secondly, we should rely on the love of the Father expressed in Jesus. Great verse here. Chapter 3, verse 1. How great is the love of the Father that he has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. We were rebels, adopted freely by a loving, gracious God. And this was not anything to do with our merit. It was God's choice. It was because of his amazing grace that we have become part of God's family. He sent his son to die for us. God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive the full rights of sons. Paul writes in Galatians 4. God really, really loves us. He's not only given us the name of sons, but also the status of sons. And that is what we are. John writes, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We can have confidence in this sovereign love. It's the love of God that will lead us home. And God doesn't make mistakes. We, like Paul, can be confident of this, that he who began a good work in us will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Now, this is the Christian hope. And this is a motivating power of hope. Back in the 1950s, a certain Dr. Richter, psychologist, uh, 
did a, a rather gruesome drowning rats experiment. He had a group of rats, he split them in half, half of the rats he put in a bucket and let them swim until they drowned. And they drowned in a relatively short time when they were exhausted. The other half, he put them in a bucket and he let them swim around until they were almost sinking. And then he picked them out of the water, put them on the side for a, for a short while before he put them back in the water again. And they swam for three days because they were given a glimpse of hope. There was a possibility they might actually make it out of the brickets. Now, our end is far less grisly than a group of rats. But we have hope. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. We have the motivating power of resurrection hope. St Paul's, remember St Paul's Cathedral? There was an old cathedral that was destroyed by the Great Fire of London in 1666. And uh, the chosen architect for the rebuilding of uh, St Paul's was Sir Christopher Wren. And he went out and was kicking through the rubble and the story goes that the first stone that he picked up was a memorial stone and it had a Latin inscription on it which read I shall rise again and it motivated him to rebuild a great cathedral a great cathedral that became a symbol of resurrection hope through the dark days of the blitz in World War II we have in linking holiness to hope, John is seeking to stimulate our motivation to live differently. We are to be what we are called to be. We are pure in Christ. We are being made pure. So let's be pure. Thirdly, if we want to know confidence, we need to trust in the work of Jesus. Verse 4 says, everyone who, who sins breaks the law. In fact, Sin is lawlessness. John is very straight here. The original problem in John's churches was that there were false teachers who were living immoral lifestyles against laws and Christ's teaching, but they were not calling it sin. They claimed to have special relationships with God, and they were leading believers astray. But sin is sin. John says, but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. One of the main reasons Jesus came was to take away our sins. By his sinless substitutionary sacrifice. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Sin is incompatible with the work of Jesus. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's works. See, the second reason Jesus died was to destroy the works of the devil. He is Christus Victor, the one who has gained a victory on the cross over the evil one. But we mustn't be complacent or compromised about our sin. We can't say, God will forgive me, it's his job, I'll just carry on sinning. Now, if we want to be confident in Christ, we cannot be complacent about our sins. If we are complacent, it will damage our confidence in Christ. So let's get right with God. Let's take this opportunity this morning to get right with God. But we must also trust in the work of Jesus to destroy sin and to help us overcome sin in our lives if we cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Jesus died so that we might be holy. Let's live our lives in the light of that. So in conclusion, we can have every reason to be confident in Christ. We can rely on his sovereign grace and his lavish love. We can rely upon his victory over sin and death and Satan. So if we want that confidence to increase, we must continue in him and take seriously the need to deal ruthlessly with the sin in our lives. Let's pray. Thank you.
Lord Jesus, that you died for us, to take away our sin. Lord, we trust you with our lives. Lord, cleanse us, we pray. Fill us with your spirit that we might live committed lives for you. Amen. Let us sing our last song, My Hope is Built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. Remember, we must not forget. Remember and we pray, for remembering is not enough. We remember those who died in battlefields near and far. We remember and we pray for those who lost, those left behind. We remember and we pray for those who, though they survived, suffered in life. We remember one who died and rose again, who defeated death. We look forward to the day when he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. We look forward to when there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things. 
that's awesome.